Let's welcome, we got Summers Point, we got Egg Harbor Township, we got those that are watching online. And uh, again, so many amazing things happening uh, over the course of these period of days and months and really the season that we're going into. It's not just fall, correct? But I mean, it is a season where I believe God is opening really some miraculous doors, not just for us as a church, but really for us as individuals. In fact, this week we got an incredible opportunity. Some of our worship team and uh, Mike Chambers, our building contra uh, contractor and myself and a few of the other people got to sit down with the press of Atlantic City uh, for an article that's coming out uh, and really what God is doing in this region. And it's good when the press of Atlantic City calls to find out what God's doing in the region, correct? Because there's a whole lot of other bad news, but come on, we're a church that can give some good news of what God's doing in this region. Come on, doesn't that make sense for some of us? And so I'm trying to sit down with the, uh, the writer and explain how God's moving in multiple locations and, you know, uh, what God's up to and kind of talking about video technology and, you know, where we're at and what's going on and Saturday nights always live and, you know, weekend, depending on where the need is and we're praying with our teams. And I said, listen up, you know, Mr. Reporter, I said, God showed up two weeks ago. I want us to kind of lock our head into this because this is how God's moving in our region because because I asked him as he was kind of talking, uh, he goes, so, you know, video screen, not video screen. I said, well, well, the last time you watched news, did you sit in front of the news reporter? And he kind of had this like little smirk on his face, like, nope. And I'm like, and you believe that guy, correct? And he didn't want to say anything, you know, like, yeah, you got to believe those guys that are telling us the news from wherever they're sitting. And I said, listen, Mr. News Reporter, I said uh, two weeks ago on uh, opening weekend up at Egg Harbor Township, I said right at our 11.15 service at Summers Point, I said at the end of a service, and I said it was a video message, you know, for the communicator, the pastor that was communicating. I said at the end of the 11.15 service two weeks ago, I said there were seven people that chose to enter into eternity that day because they gave their lives to the Lord. I said, that's how God is moving in a supernatural way. In fact, I said, statistically, that was the highest amount of salvations through all of the services. And I mean, my man is sitting there, his head is trying to wrap around what God is doing. And he goes, he goes, I just think I've got to show up. I said, yes, Jesus, that's the very thing that you need to be doing is show up and see what God is doing in this place. Well, it's Friends and Family Weekend. If you're a guest with us, regardless of what location you're in, I know God is going to speak to you in an incredible way. Maybe you're listening to this on a podcast or Facebook uh, during the week, but we're in this series called Back on Track, and it's really been challenging a lot of us. And uh, we've talked about, a few weeks ago, we talked about faith. Uh, last two weeks, we talked about freedom. If you missed that, you missed the illustration of uh, handcuffing people in services. And, uh, and so today, we're gonna talk about relationships, and this is a good thing for relationships too. But really, last week, we said in regards to freedom that we are shackled to some junk in our lives, and we need to break free of that junk, and we need really Jesus to come and not just open uh, the handcuffs or the shackles of the junk that we have in our lives, but ultimately, and this was the takeaway, and we got a lot of response from this, but ultimately, Jesus doesn't just take off the handcuffs or the shackles of junk in our lives and throw down the shackles, but what Jesus does is He puts the shackles on Himself. Now, for illustration purposes, I am not going to lock myself up in this because there will be a good possibility that even though the keys are up here, for the sake of reality, I will not be able to get myself out of these. And I will preach the rest of this message in a pair of handcuffs and not be able to get out of them. In fact, I was practicing with one of my kids and I put them on their legs upside down. And I'm literally laying on the floor trying to un undo it. And my, my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm like, Shh, just don't worry. I'm practicing before I preach. That was two weeks ago. So you got to catch that online. But today I want to talk about relationships and... Uh, because here at Fusion Church, our vision is to reach people far from Jesus, equip Christ followers, go to all the nations. So I love stories when we're in the justice facilities and we get to pray with people that will be behind bars for the rest of their life, but it doesn't mean their spirit needs to be behind bars. Does that make sense? So yeah, we have the opportunity to worship like crazy and do this, but I love it when we got some ninja warriors that are going behind the scenes all over this region in different facets and different ways. And always at the bottom of the 
app is a way that you can get connected this week. So we're going to be in, up in Vineland, Millville this week, feeding the homeless. That's a way you can connect with the go part of what we're doing here at Fusion Church. But the Reach, Equip, Go is fine. But what's on the wall is it happening down the hall. And how it happens down the hall here at Fusion Church is we have four values. We want to have a healthy, growing faith. We talked about that. We want to have a healthy, growing freedom. We've talked about that. And we want to have a healthy, growing family. We're going to talk about that in the context of friendship and relationship today. And then we're going to talk about how do I have a healthy, growing financial outlook? Because 50% of anxiety and stress is often coming from the finances that we have. And so let's jump into this today. I want to talk about uh, true friendship. I want to talk about the title of today's message is The Greatest Friend. The Greatest Friend. And uh, we're going to get to that on point four, but let's kind of build a little bit of a synopsis over here. And right off the top, number one, true friendship or relationships take time. So number one, true friendship or relationships take time. And how many of us, we live in this uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube famous, microwave, drive through uh, culture where it's like, I, I think if I can just get an app on my phone, I can get a thousand friends in one day. In fact, my son uh, was talking to me and he goes, dad, dad, if I just download this app, I can get thousands of friends. And I'm thinking, and that's the world we live in, correct? Like if I install the app, then I'm going to get thousands of friends. The reality is most of us are sitting going, yeah, that's not the truth. Because all of this in my life lets me know that's not reality. But yet we live in this drive-through reality. We live in this microwave. Like I just want it now. I'm not waiting for the crock pot. We live in this Insta famous celebrity YouTube. I mean, not in the history of the world has there been a, a, a job profile that changes children in elementary school are choosing that when they grow up one day, it's not a sports athlete, it's not a lawyer, it's not a doctor, it's not a first responder, it's to be YouTube famous. YouTube famous. And so again, true friendship or relationship takes time. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 tells us the following. It says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but let's read together, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. There, you can have all the Facebook friends in the world, but it, Scripture says there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And again, that's point four. We're going to get to that, but let's spend some time building. What, what does this time look like? In fact, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17 says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born, what's that word? Adversity. A, fr a friend, hey, 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 where are you going? You paying? You know, the list goes on and on, but, but, but go through adversity, correct? Go through some shackles. Go through some junk in your life. Get yourself in trouble, drop the ball, mess up, stumble, and all of a sudden, you're gonna see who are those people around you. Go through some life transitions. And what I've learned within my life, this is Brendan's uh, you know, kind of school of hard knocks here, but is to seek and find true friends, not just seasonal friends. Think about that. Seek and find true friends, not just seasonal friends. But because seasonal friends will come and go. I mean, we, we live in a seasonal culture around here. I mean, a lot, a lot of local people are excited, like, hey, all the out-of-towners are left, and now I get to experience the beach by myself, you know? Now I get to walk down the boardwalk without millions of people and waiting in lines. But, but, but those are seasonal people that come down. But, but I've recognized that I want to find true friends. And what I've learned in finding true friends is that I shouldn't burn the bridges when my friend goes through something or I'm going through something. Have you ever met that person that loves to burn a bridge? I mean, you get into like an argument or, or a little spat with them and it's like, whoosh, burn, baby, burn. You know, I mean, they're pouring the gasoline on your friendship. They're unfriending you on Facebook. You know, I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, it's just, they're watching this whole bridge just just burn down. And then what I've realized, okay, press in for this little bit, press in, regardless of where you're watching. What I've realized is that if you are a true Christ follower, then God is gonna prompt you at some point to reconcile that relationship. Because when I read the Bible, the God I serve, Jesus, is a God of reconciliation. He came to reconcile you and I, humanity to divinity. So He's always gonna want reconciliation. I don't care what your ex did to you. I don't care what 
they, I mean, they, I mean, that's a whole message on unforgiveness over there. But the reality is, if you burn the bridge down, at some point, you're going to have to repair the bridge. And in regards to friendship taking time, don't burn the bridge. Now, what I want to give you some thought process to and today is just because, because I think there needs to be boundaries in friendships. I, I get that 100%. There has to be boundaries in families and relationships. Thanksgiving's coming up. Uh, Christmas is coming up. You're going to have crazy people in your house. And so there has to be boundaries. I'm just saying don't burn the bridge. And in regards to boundaries is you can put up a in construction. Have you ever driven around our community? There's always bridges going out in our community and there can be a detour sign. Don't burn the bridge. Just put a detour sign up. Uh, you can slow down the traffic on the bridge to one lane. Have you ever been on a one lane you know, bridge when they're working on one side of the bridge? One lane is open. So you're gonna wait. You're gonna slow that relationship down a little bit. Uh, again, you can say under construction. So you can have detour. I hope you're writing this down. Detour, under construction, or or a one lane because I've realized again if I am a believer in Jesus and, and I would recognize today our friends and family weekend that, that not all of us have made a decision to serve Jesus I pray at the end of today's message you would make that decision but again we're, we're, a, we're a safe place for you to explore and kick and so what I've learned in friendships taking time which is point number one is that if I burn the bridge I'm gonna have to go build the bridge again and there's a lot of pain in rebuilding the bridge. There's a lot of effort. There's a lot of input that goes into rebuilding the bridge. And if I would just slow down the traffic on the bridge in the, in the, in the context of time, because at the end of the day, I can simply go back and remove the detour sign. I can simply go back and allow traffic to keep on the bridge. And so come on, tell your neighbor, don't burn the bridge. Come on, tell them right now. Don't burn the bridge. I don't, whatever service you're in, don't. Burn the bridge. So number one, friendship takes time. Number two is this, seek out wise friends or relationships. Come on, let's say that together. Seek out wise friends or relationships. Again, in our, in our culture, we can have friends, but I wanna ask you, are they wise friends? In fact, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 says, he who walks with the wise grows, okay, so he who walks with the wise grows wise, but then it says a companion of fools suffers harm. And so what the Bible is telling us, and I love the book of Proverbs, it is so rich, is that, hey, you gotta get some wise people. You gotta get some wise relationships. You gotta get some wise friendships around you. In fact, even just in the, in the last few weeks, as God is doing a, a really a supernatural work in our church, it's pretty crazy. In fact, I mean, uh, Egg Harbor Township, they've seen in some of our ministries, we've seen up to six to seven times growth of people coming in. Our kids' ministry, God is doing something supernatural um, at EHT in our kids' ministry. And so again, you heard the announcement today. Man, you, you need to hop on a team. You need to be a part of what God's doing. Come and join us this Wednesday at Welcome Home on this coming Sunday at both locations. But, but what I've learned is that I need wise friendships and relationships. And so right after uh, EHT opened up, you know what I did? I picked up the phone and I called some wise friends, wise pastors around the country. And I said, talk me through what I'm going through. Hi, Brandon. Hey, listen, listen, up. I don't want to pay stupid tax in my life. I, how many of us have paid way too much stupid tax in our life? Okay. So are you about to have a kid? Guess what? Talk to someone who's had a kid before. Okay, dad, you know, you're having a kid, talk to someone, don't, don't talk to your buddy. Come on, in our culture, the blind leads the blind all the time. You wanna get out of debt? Don't talk to your friend who has crazy credit card debt, okay? You're going, come on, someone gotta press in. You're going through marriage problems? Don't go back to your mother that's been divorced eight times and say, mama, how do you want me to deal with this situation? Girlfriend being divorced eight times. She is the wrong person to speak to. So the wise needs to lead the wise. Get on the phone. Get connected with those wise people. In fact, John Maxwell, the leadership author, says, show me, th this is huge. This is huge. John Maxwell, the leadership author, says, show me five of your friends and I will show you in a few short years what you look like physically. Show me your friends, what you look like physically, how you're doing emotionally, how you're acting spiritually, and how your finances look like. What? Wise friends versus foolish. You mean how I look like physically? Yeah, yeah. How I act emotionally? Uh-huh. 
Because if you got crazy talk in your head the whole time from your friends, guess who's going to start acting crazy? You. If your friends are going out and eating unhealthy, guess who's going to eat? You can't eat salad the whole time. I'm, I know. I've been there before. When I travel, they all want to go to barbecue restaurants. I'm like, Jesus, please, let's just go to a salad restaurant. And can I just say, I go to the barbecue restaurant and I eat like a pig at the barbecue restaurant. And then I come back and I pay for it. Every single time I come and there's a pain point in my life. And so next weekend at all of our locations, Imago Day this week, uh, our, our best friends, pastors Hannah and Jacob Olet from Thrive Church in Denver, Colorado are going to be in and out of different services and Imago Day. And, and legitimately, we've done life with them for 18 years. 18 years. We've uh, gone into ministry together. Uh, Pastor Jacob and I both worked for our father-in-laws. Yeah, lots of counseling right there. We would always talk each other off the ledge because we were working for our wives' dads in churches. They were in Michigan. I was in uh, Long Island and Phoenix. And so they're going to be in town, but, but they've known us. And, and you, know what, you know what, Jacob, because he doesn't call me Pastor Brennan, I don't call him Pastor Jacob either. My man can look at me and he can, he can know when I'm lying. Some of us are going to have wise friends in our life. They can look at us in our face and know when we're lying, when we're talking a bunch of junk, when we're faking it, correct? Because guess what? You need to have those wise people in your life. And, and, and I want to kind of take, take another step, okay? And, and I'm going to talk about something that, that's going to be a, a pain point for some of us when I talk about wise friends. Because this is, I wrote this down, and if you, if you don't have the app available, or you, you can't screen clip, maybe take a picture uh, in whatever location you're at. Uh, but, but I want to talk about this statement in regards to a pain point. Wisdom will never go against the Word of God. Okay? So we want to find wise friends. Show me five of your friends. I'll show you all these different types of things. But wisdom, the wisdom will never go against the Word of God. And I think for some of us, we're trying to build friendships or even more relationships that the Bible would call, and this is a big word, being unequally yoked, okay? And so I'm on the unpack it a little bit. And again, recognizing up front, regardless of where you're at, is that this is gonna be a pain point for some of us. And some of us are gonna go, hey, I made that decision a long time ago, and I'm shackled to this. And, and I wanna turn around and say, we're gonna get to point number four, where there's a lot of grace, a lot of love, a lot of mercy. But I wanna talk about pain for a moment, because I wanna stop some of us from going into pain and I want to free some of us from the pain and maybe the lies of the enemy. Again, you've got to watch last week that you might have in your life. Because it says in 2 Corinthians, some of you already started reading. You're like, what is this guy going to talk about? <laughs> Down in your app. Uh, I want to talk about being unequally yoked in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. So this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Corinth that was very similar to our culture and our region. And he says in verse 14, he says, do not be yoked. Okay, yoke. Think of a cow yoke. Okay, two cows are yoked together with a piece of wood that is fashioned that they can't move. If one moves, that when the stronger one moves, the weaker one going to move with them, okay? It says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers, non-Christ followers, okay? For what does righteousness have to do with wickedness have in common? Or what does fellowship with light have with darkness? Now, the pa that's the NIV. The Passion Translation says it in a little bit more of a modern term. It says in verse 14, it says, don't continue to team up with unbelievers, okay? So I want to let you know, we're going to just, we're going to equally offend every single one of us in this room today because I've been there before. There are people in this community that I really want to be friends with. They're really funny people. I mean, it's awesome to be around them. They're unequally yoked. They're no good for me to be around those people, okay? Don't continue to team up with unbelievers in mismatched alliances. I'll let that sink in for some of us right now. For what partnership is there between righteousness and rebellion? Who could mingle light and darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Satan? And what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What friendship does God's temple have with demons? I mean, it's heavy stuff right here. For indeed, we are the temple. If you have made a decision to receive Jesus, you are the temple of the living God, just as God has said. Let's read this together. I will make my home in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Now, let's go back to talking about being yoked. That's an old biblical term. Let's use a better analogy for what we're in, shackled. There are some of us that due to whatever junk in our lives, you are shackling yourself to something that's going to cause you a lot of pain in your life. You are shackling up or shacking up 
in a relationship that in the end is unwise. In the end, in time is going to be no good for us. And I get it. Like, I get it. My mom lived an incredibly painful life because she never wanted to be alone. And so every time I came back, either from because I lived at boarding school, and then I went into ministry, every time I came back, she would let me know where she was living with the next guy because she wasn't willing to deal with the junk in her life and what she was shackled to in the past. So she would rather feel her life with unwise relationships and abusive relationships instead of, we're going to get to it, point number four, allowing Jesus to be her best friend. Does that make sense? In fact, a, a, a biblical commentary would allow us to know that Paul's teachings here include marriage, business, personal relationships, and we never abandon those that are far from Jesus. So what I'm, I'm not saying abandon people. I mean, this is the church that goes with ninja warriors into jails and prays with people in solitary confinement. Does that make sense? This is the church that every single week we're out in this community, loving this community. But what I'm saying is if you're about to shackle yourself to someone, you better believe that Jesus is leading both of you. You better know. That in the end, when it says there in that scripture in the Passion Translation that I will make my home in them and they will be my people, that Jesus is leading. And every single one of us here today, regardless of where you're at, regardless of where you're watching, okay? Every single one of us have made decisions, Brendan included, where I've been unequally yoked to someone in whatever situation it is. And in those moments, man, I know I'm influenced for the negative. I know that, like right now, I mean, there is someone in this community that I would love to be, but I mean, I would love to be friends. This guy is funny. He's cool. He makes me laugh. I mean, the list goes on and on and he wants to be my friend and he's reaching out. But guess what? He is so stinking unequally yoked. Now, some of us kick back and go, well, pastor, you should invite him to church. I've invited him to church. Okay. But to be friends with him, to be like best friends, to be soul friends, that's pastor Jacob. That's going to show up next week. That's the guy that's journeyed with me for 19 years. Okay. But, but that friendship of hanging out with that guy, there is nothing good because he's a stronger personality than I am. Okay, and so guess what? Two bulls yoked together. My man that is unequally yoked, that's real funny. You know what he's gonna be doing the whole time? He's gonna be pulling me, pulling me, pulling me. We've all been in life where we're like, ah, I don't wanna go there. I don't wanna go there. But when they're stronger, and trust me, the enemy many times is pulling us in the wrong direction. That's why the Word of God's gotta be embedded in our hearts. And we gotta come into the co community of Jesus and worship and be encouraged and be in connect groups and press in. So does it make sense? Because again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, do not be deceived. Come on, let's read this together. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. And so there's this expectation again that friendship, even in church, happens immediately. But it takes time. There's this expectation that we're trying to figure out who's wise, who's not unwise. How do you figure that out? Look at their fruit. Look at their fruit. See what their lifestyle is. Here's number three. Number three is this. Find friendships or relationships that sharpen you. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 27 verse 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Pastor Jacob, Pastor Hannah, we sharpen each other. Brotherhood, the churches that I'm involved in, we sharpen each other. Our leadership teams and our elders here, my freedom group that I'm in. What's up, freedom group on, on Thursday nights, you know? We sharpen each other. I mean, I've got a lady in that freedom group, the way she worships her face off, every time I'm like, Brandon, you gotta get your worship on. That girlfriend's been saved just a few weeks and she worshiping a whole lot harder than you. And I'm like, come on, man, get your worship on, okay? Sharpens you. Iron sharpens each other. That's why connect groups and teams and joining a team this weekend is the best thing you can do. Friends and family, if you go out there and you find a team, you're like, can I join your team? Literally go down the aisle. Can I join your team? Can I join? And then just eat all the food that they've given you over the weekend. Can I join your team? Eat some food. Because guess what? There are people that are looking to dull you. There are people that are looking to discourage you. There are people that are wanting you to get on their elevator of friendship and take you down to the basement. You don't need to be in the basement. You need to be going to the next level. Come on, tell your neighbor, you don't need to be in the basement. Come on, look at them and say, you don't need to be in the basement. Tell your other neighbor, you need to go to the next level. Come on, look at them in the eye, check them out and go, you need to go to the 
next level, getting back on track. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, I love this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, it says, two are better than, what's that word? One, because one, one, no fun being one, because when they have a good return for their work, if one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. That's why connect groups are so powerful. That's why teams are so powerful. That's why showing up on the weekends is so powerful. In fact, we've got, we got a great ministry here in this church. It's called Fight Club. It's men that get together and eat because that's what men do when they get together on Saturdays. And Fight Club has got a bunch of guys in it, but these guys break up in threes as best as possible and they do life together as a three because they can hold each other accountable. I want you to watch this uh, story of the Fight Club. We call it Fight Club because we are we're fighting against the temptations and we're fighting for the wholeness of our families. And we just constantly fight every single day for all of those and to stay true to one another and to stay true to Christ. Fight Club got started when the three of us each felt that there was a need for a men's ministry. And there's nothing to where men felt safe to come and bring up their problems. For us to go through it and think that we're alone, then the enemy is winning if we're going through these things alone. And through us just having a Christ-centered relationship through the three of us, uh, talking those things out and speaking life into each other, praying for each other, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of walking through it, it's been, it's been amazing. Men like to be alone. Men don't want to ever share any, anything with anybody. But if you find people that you can go through life with, that you can be accountable to, that can be accountable to you, and you will find that life, you know, you're still gonna go through hard times, you're still gonna have your bad days, but when you have brothers with, that you can go through it with, it makes it so much better, because you know you always have someone that you can rely on. Like one of the really important things that we even talked about is, um, you know, we're all married guys and we have different levels of our own family, but. Uh, we were single once, mm -hmm. you know, we were, how does that look? Or we've been through bad relationships and we've been through hard times uh, in a family and outside of a family. And so, uh, and I think we've really seen a lot of growth and a really lot of uh, work with guys that are not married, guys wondering what it takes to be a father, what it takes to be a dad or a husband one day, um, you know, in Christ, how does that look? One of the important things about being in, in a, a, a friend relationship with, with other guys is that when you spend a lot of time with each other and you're constantly in communication, you can tell when something's going on. I can tell when something's going on with, with Nick or something's going on with Alan and vice versa, or something's going on with me. You know, and when, when I mess up, I know that they're gonna call me out on it. And they know if, if I can do the same thing with them. Yeah, and what's great about that is we use we use something called Marco Polo because we're not together at each time and we don't see each other all the time, but we can always tell when there's something going on with each of us. And it's not always easy, you know. There have been times when we've been very we, angry yeah. with, with each other, <laughs> um, but it was things that were necessary to get across, and we're feeding into each other. You know, we're poor, we're, we're speaking life into each other to become better men of God. It allows us to step out of any moment that we're in after communicating with either either one of us. And it allows us to step back, think, pause, and realize what's going on. Come on, I, you know, isn't it like we're doing life together? Because again, number one, friendships, relationships take time. Uh, number two, you got to find wise people around you because again, you, you don't want to be shackled up to the wrong thing. And uh, and then number three, you want to find people that sharpen you. You don't want to be dull. You want to be sharpened in this life that we're living because again, we want to be kingdom minded and not minded uh, of this world. And, and I realized this, and this is why that video is so important. Because you see the video and, you know, you have no idea the pain that some of those men in that video are going through. You have no idea the, the challenges. You have no idea the sacrifice. And you have no idea that, that sometimes, and I want to speak to some of us that are sitting here and going, yeah, yeah, I still haven't moved on from being unequally yoked because I've made some decisions where, where I'm living out that pain. And, and what I've learned because of the grace of Jesus in my own life, is when I've made decisions to be unequally yoked in a circumstance or a situation. But for the grace of God to change that situation, I'm committed to that. 
But what I need is I need some brothers, a brotherhood, a sisterhood, an Imago Day, a connect group, a freedom group, a, a worship team, this worship team, wars for each other, the kids team, the check-in on the kids team, the nursery team. What I need is when I'm being pushed in the wrong direction, whether it's in my mind or whether it's in my choices or whether, whether it's in discouragement or whether it's in a detour or whether it's in a distraction, what I need is someone to go, hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, are you showing up? Are you worshiping? Are, are you digging into your, your soaping, your scripture, your observation, your application, your prayer? That they, and, and you know how my friends do it? They look at me and they, they simply say, so what did God speak to you in soaping today? I mean, like if you, if you can't answer what God spoke to you in soaping, then you weren't soaping. They're like, hey, why are you not soaping? And so the accountability pushes us in because again, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22 says, plans fail for lack of counsel. You gotta get some counsel around you. Not counsel that drags you away, but counsel that brings you into the presence of God. But with many advisors, they succeed. And I've shared stories over and over when I, Brendan, have made dumb decisions or un- uh, decisions where the timing hasn't been right. Because, because here's something, so even in your notes, maybe you want to write this down. There are a lot of good things, but what's the right thing? There's a lot of good relationships, but what's the right relationship? There's a lot of good friendships, but what's the right friendship? Because here's number four. Number four is this, Jesus is the greatest friend. It is. And I, I know it's a pitch. I know it's, you know, friends and family weekend. And, but, but can I just say, like growing up, I was born in Zimbabwe, which was uh, Rhodesia. I moved to Namibia, which was Southwest Africa. I moved to South Africa, which is a country of apartheid. We left South Africa. I went to war-torn Mozambique. My mom came back to South Africa. My parents got divorced. My mom left to go to Botswana. My dad lived in, in Mozambique. I lived in South Africa. I decided to leave Southern Africa. I moved here to in 2000. I was on Long Island for six years, six years in, in Long Island. I uh, moved to Phoenix because because I got married to Danielle in Long Island. We went out to Phoenix because we felt God calling us there. We were out in Long Island. Phoenix for six years. Six years later in 2012 uh, of, of August, we moved here. We've been here for seven years. And so this whole friendship thing, like it's a big deal in my life. And this year I sat down and I said, okay, I, I'm gonna begin to invest in friendships, but I need to invest in this friendship first. Because all these friendships, they're gone. I mean, when my kids come home and they're like, "Ah, she doesn't, she's not my best friend anymore. She broke up with me. I'm like, your best friend broke up with you. My best friend broke up with me. Next day, we're best friends again. I'm like, okay, you're gonna break up tomorrow. You know, we live in that kind of best friend, you know, break up, who this, that kind of culture. And my friends there, where am I going with it? I mean, it's brutal, brutal going to school these days. And what I keep on telling my kids is, guess what? Dad in South Jersey doesn't have one of my friends from all of my school experience in Southern Africa. But what I do have is Jesus. I mean, my wife, I am obsessed with my wife. She's one of the best things that ever happened to me. But at the end of the day, she's great. But Jesus is number one. Jesus has to be number one. And again, I know some of you are sitting here and going, really? Yes, yes, really. Because everything else is pointless. Finding wise friends is pointless. Trying to break the soul ties is pointless. Trying to deal with the junk in our lives is pointless because that's like we're just trying to, you know, get ourselves washed and we got to get a bath and we got to allow Jesus to cleanse us because John 15 verse 13 says, greater love, greater love has no one than this that they laid down his life for his friends. And none of us have done that because you're sitting here today. Yeah, you're right here. So you didn't love your friend that much that you submitted your life for him. You told your friend, okay, it's all right. I'll see you later. We'll figure this whole friendship thing out. But Jesus, Jesus, He submitted His life that we might might not just have an eternal destiny, but we might have a kingdom purpose living on this earth. In fact, Proverbs 18 verse 24, we read that a little while ago, but it says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Because friends will come and go. Pastors will come and go. Churches will come and go. Ministries will come and go. Connect groups, those are all good things. And we want you to be a part of that. But at the end of the day, Jesus is my greatest friend. Now, real practical as we close, I wanna give you a few things. Number one, we've gotta be intentional. We've gotta be intentional. And that's why we do soaping. Because soaping helps us every single day here at Fusion Church to be intentional. Intentional. 
I don't care if you don't do sobbing, just do something every single day. Point B is it's got to be time blocked. Tell your neighbor, time blocked. Time blocked, okay? Because if you don't time block it, you ain't never going to do it. Okay, and my list of things, my honeydew list is so long, but if I time block it, man, I'm going to knock those things out. Okay, your time with Jesus, developing your best friend, it's always not going to be perfect, okay? I mean, you're not going to walk out every single time having just a holy Jesus encounter. There are some times I come out, I am fired up, ready to go. And other times I'm like, that was good. That was good. And then I go the next day, I've got some expectation. Uh, yeah, here's D, okay? Be a good listener. Some of us are like, yuck, 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 yuck. okay, God, thank you very much, and we're out of here. And, and, and God's like, can you just shut up? Can you just stop for a moment? Like, I want to download. And so practicing times of silence and sitting, putting our phone away, turning off, just, and I know some of us are living crazy lives, so do it in the car somewhere. We live by the shore. Go find some place to sit down and just listen. And then here's the last thing, okay? Not a drive through friendship. Not a drive through relationship. There's too many of us right now that you got to drive through friendship with Jesus. You're like, okay, play it on audio Bible. Okay, thank you, Siri. In Jesus' name, amen. And you're off to work. And that's all right once in a hot second, but you can't live off of drive through. You need a good, nutritious meal to sit down and dig in to what God's doing. So here are the application points for us this weekend. Number one, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Well, what's the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now? Number two, uh, are you friends with Jesus? Like, like real honest, in any service, regardless of whether it's live or video, I'm gonna ask you point blank, are you friends with Jesus? And if you're not, today, right now is the greatest decision that you can make to say, I need to be friends with Jesus. Number three, how do you need to practically cultivate that friendship this week? Are, are you treating Him like a drive through relationship? Because it's not gonna last, correct? Are you not being intentional? Do you not have a, a way to be able to practice it? And maybe it's showing up at one of our go opportunities this week to say, listen, I'm gonna be intentional in building friendships with the people around me. Come on, let's pray. Father, right now, Lord, I pray that You would touch us. I pray that You would fill us. And I pray that You would move supernaturally and powerfully within our lives. God, I know today there is incredible loneliness that is plaguing some of us. Lord, I know today that some of us, God, regardless of what service or location we're in, God, Lord, that we are shackled in an unequally yoked relationship. But I pray right now in Jesus' Name, there is supernatural grace and mercy in that relationship. God, I pray that You would just step in in a powerful way and You would begin to move in our lives. And I pray this and I ask this in Jesus Christ's Name. Amen.